what I'm going to do this morning is kind of once again show you a few of the things I have in my office and sort of tell the story behind them. I have all kinds of stuff in my office and gosh if I had thought of that I mean I have I mean all kinds of nonsense in here all right um, but the thing I want to go over today is this bag now first of all I love bags I just adore them so I have a bag here I have two there I have one there I mean, I have bags all over the place. Um, and they all have meaning and they all have a purpose and, and so on. Now, this bag I got um, on, on Portobello Street in London, what, like 15, 13, 14 years ago? Now, Portobello Street is an amazing place. I mean, it's wild. If you don't know about it, look it up. It's it's like a bohemian, uh, you know, bazaar. Uh, shops, stores, performers, you name it. And actually, when I lived in London and Oxford back when I was 13, 14, 15 years old during the summers, um, and I was in my punk stage then, yes, and we'll talk more about that in a moment, I used to go to Portobello all the time to buy punk gear. So I was all punked out, and that was back in the very early 80s. So it was the tail end of the punk era, but London was a great place to be a punk, let me just tell you. All right, so in any case, let's go ahead and talk about it. So we've got this bag, kind of cool, meant, I mean, it's not old, but it's meant to look like old World War II sort of military bag and so on. But you notice all the buttons. So let's let's talk. I'm going to get that out of the way. Let's talk about the buttons. Some of the buttons are very new. Some of them are very old. So Captain America, of course, new because it's Captain America. I love the Avengers. I love Cap. Um, Yin Yang. All right. Speaking to my philosophy side, my theology side. Um, Thundercats, all right, Thundercats, ho, there's a lot of reasons I got kicked out of BYU when I was working on my bachelor's degree, one of which was I totally fell, fell in love with this girl, this girl who is now my wife, and we totally skipped class, and we just stayed home and watched Thundercats and Transformers and all those old cartoons, and they weren't old back then, they were the new things, right? So Thundercats is kind of near and dear to our heart. Um, okay, the city library, bigger on the inside. All right, just kind of a reference to Doctor Who. Uh, the Watchmen, a fantastic, amazing comic book series. So far, you know, the, 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 the Thundercats is not old, but not new. This is still kind of not old, but not new. Batman, because Batman. Then we have uh, Charlie Brown, just because it's cool. Now we've got a couple of really old ones. Uh, another Batman, that's not a really old one. This Anarchy pen. This Anarchy pen and this Sex Pistols pen um, were both part of my original punk outfit. So back when I was, like I say, 13 years old, 14, I was heavy into the punk stage. And I had all the gear, I had the dyed hair, you name it, right? And the Anarchy pin and the Sex Pistols pin were, were part of my ensemble. Um, as was the, you know, Union Jack here. Another Batman, another Batman, Bad Wolf, again, reference to Doctor Who. Peace, because peace. And then Gur from Zim. I mean, if you don't know Zim, you have not yet lived. You got to check out Zim, Space Invader. Wonder Woman, because yes, totally. Big fan of Wonder Woman, and I think I'm... I'm a feminist at heart. We can talk about that later. Absolutely. 
And then this is my last one that, again, is very old. This goes back to my original punk ensemble, uh, Politically Correct. Of course, the irony was, as a member of the punk movement, we were anything but politically correct. So to wear a pin that said politically correct, irony, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's this bag. So, you know, I know, not too terribly interesting to you, but great for me. I don't really use this bag anymore. I just hang it in my office and have it back here so I can see it. It's more of just an objet d'art now. All right? So thanks a lot, and uh, let's get started. All right. So I hope you found that at least semi-interesting. You know, it's when you get to be my age, it's always kind of fun to look back at things that used to really drive me, right? We used to really uh, fill me with energy and passion, and it feels like a trillion years ago. Um, and it wasn't quite a trillion years ago, but pretty darn close, right? So, yeah, always kind of fun to revisit my... Uh, my my gear from that back then. I actually have in my closet a box, box about that big, with a whole bunch of my old punk stuff. Um, it's it's actually really in lousy condition. I mean, it wasn't great condition when I had it. We were pretty rough on it, so it's all threadbare and so forth now. But I can't bring myself quite to throw it away. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and get started today. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about communication and the use of power, okay? Now, remember, since this is business communication, internal business communication, meaning how we communicate in the workplace, right? Well, face it. A day doesn't go by at work that you don't think about power in some way or another. You're either thinking about your boss and the power that he or she holds over you, or you're thinking about your role and the lack of power that you may feel that you have, or you're thinking about the customer and the degree to which the customer may or may not have power. This whole idea that the customer is always right um, connotes a certain level of power on their part that we do not have as employees, right? And in everything we do at work is because somebody in power has asked us to do it. And everything that we ask others to do, we are somehow or another applying power to get others to do the things that we want them to do, right? So power and communication are inextricably linked. You can't have one without the other. And we're going to talk about that today. And we're going to talk about how we use communication in power. And most importantly to you, and I'm going to come back in on this one, I want you to understand the power that you have today, not that you will have or that you want to have or that you may one day have. I want you to understand the power that you hold today and how your communication skills can help you leverage that power. Okay? All right. Let's do it. So let's come on over here. Um, remember, remember the, the definition of internal business communication? To inform, influence, and affect the attitudes, feelings, and behaviors of those in the organization, right? To meet business objectives. Where's my marker? There's my marker, right? We've talked about this. It's all about informing the organization so that we can meet business objectives. And as I said, by its very definition, communication infers leadership and power. All right. How so? Well, you're informing, influencing, and affecting the attitudes, behaviors, and feelings of others. 
That's power, okay? So it's really important that we understand in what ways does communication hold that power, all right? And that's what we're gonna do today. So, now one thing I wanna call out is power is an interesting word, right? It's a very loaded word. Um, especially here in, say, Western cultures, we sort of have a, um, a skeptical view of power. And by the way, you should, okay? Don't let go of that. We have a skeptical view of power because power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, power over others puts them in a, you know, subordination. We believe in democracy and a republic and in equal rights and free agency and all that sort of stuff, right? And so we look at power with a certain degree of skepticism. In fact, if I were to, if, if, if somebody were to say to you, I want more power, that might raise your hackles just a little bit. That may kind of make you go, huh? And wonder about the person. For them to say, I want more power, just because of how that word is so loaded. However, if they were to say to you, I want more influence, you'd go, well, yeah, duh, of course you want more influence. Who doesn't want more influence? I can prove that you, you want more influence in your life, in your career, in the direction that you, you go and so forth. You don't want to be beholden to the whims of fate. You want autonomy and influence in your life. I can prove it because you're watching this, right? You're in school, you're watching these lectures, you're trying to improve yourself, you're trying to get the skills you need so that you can have more autonomy and influence in your life. Autonomy and influence is power. And so I like to kind of say power is like fire. It is amoral, okay? I'm gonna type the word amoral just so that you understand. Amoral is not the same as immoral. Okay, immoral. Immoral means bad, nasty, gross, unethical, right? Sinful. Amoral means it has no moral properties. It is neither good nor bad. It is neither right nor wrong, right? No moral properties. It simply is. It, it is in the application of fire that makes it either good or bad, right? So I can use fire to cook a wonderful meal for my family and friends. Fire is good. I can use fire to burn down my host, house and get the insurance money. Fire is bad, right? It's the same thing when it comes to power. We all want more power and autonomy and influence in our lives. The question is, for what? means? To what end do you want this power? We are going to assume in this lecture that you want power for moral, good, strong reasons. Yes, Carlos, neutral, absolutely neutral. You get the idea. Boom, right? So we're going to assume that you are moral and ethical because you're awesome. Of course you are. And we want to use power in the right way. So we're going to learn how to do that through communication today. I just wanted to call out, yeah, power, influence, could be good or bad. All right. Now, here's the thing. Power is exerted by leaders. All right. Power is the tool of leadership and communication is the means by which power is, is extended. Okay. Okay. Um, so I want to make sure that we define leaders because I am about to assert, posit, I am about to suggest that you today are leaders, all right? And so we want to understand what leadership is and how you are leaders. So let's first define leadership. One who influences others to attain goals. If you, at any time in your life, 
in some way or another influenced somebody else to attain a larger goal than you exhibited leadership, all right? Now, obviously, the greater number of followers, the greater the influence. We can exercise leadership with one person or two people, but the more influence you have is really determined by the number of followers or the influence of those influencers. So in social media, if any of you are out there in social media trying to like build an Instagram uh, following um, or a TikTok following, or in my case, a YouTube following, there's a saying which is influence the influencers. So sure, my mother follows me on Facebook, but who follows my mother, right? But now if John Green were to follow me, not Facebook, YouTube, if John Green were to follow me on YouTube, my numbers would go up the roof, right? And so up the roof, out of the roof, through the, through the roof, we go through roofs in, in this language, through roofs. Um, that's an example of influencing the influencers, okay? Now, leadership, power, and communication are inextricably linked. You cannot have power without communication. That's why learning communication is so important, because in communication lies your power, your influence, your autonomy. All right. Now, I want you to get out some paper or your phone um, or your tablet or your computer, some way to take some notes, all right? Because this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about the various aspects of power and how communication enables these aspects of power. Um, and, and I want you to kind of set up two columns, right? So we're gonna come over here, two columns, you know, just like that. The first column, and let's get this out of the way so you can see, is how you influence others. All right, just put on there how you influence others. And then the other one is how others influence you, okay? So just something like this, right? I should have the camera up a little higher. How you influence others, and you're gonna take note as we talk about each of the ways that we you know, exhibit power through communication and how others are influencing you through the tools that we're about to talk about, okay? So if you do that, then when we come back um, to this, you know, after we go through all the, uh, all the types of power, you'll be able to participate and share your stuff and get those points going up that Carlos has already started us on, okay? All right, so with that, let me ask you a question, and we're gonna go to our little question screen here in a moment. Why do you listen to me? Okay, now I want you to play with this for a moment because you take time out of your day. You, um, especially Mondays and Wednesdays and Mondays, especially at 8.30, you take time out of your day. You attend these lectures. Um, you participate in the chat section. You do the assignments that I ask you to do. You do a lot, okay? Why? Why on earth are you doing this? Why do you listen to me? So let's go ahead and play with that idea and uh, we'll, we'll see what comes up. And where's my question one? There it is.
Okay, fantastic. Let's come back, by the way, and we're going to add a whole bunch more as we go along. But right off, we've got, we're now up to six or seven. I'm going to go ahead and put this up to six and we'll get more there. Awesome comments and contributors, right? Excellent, excellent. Okay, let's play with some of these. All right, so Taylor says, because I'm good at teaching, well, thank you. Thank you. But she goes on and gives more detail, and that's excellent, right? Enthusiastic and therefore make class enjoyable, right? So enthusiasm, okay, all right. But now, mind you, Taylor, and uh, I, I'm, far be it from me to disagree with you, right? But a lot of people are enthusiastic, and I don't listen to a damn thing they say, <laughs> right? Enthusiasm alone won't get you the time of day from me. Uh, Josh, so that I can pass your class and graduate so I don't have to listen to anyone anymore. By the way, Josh, oh, did I? I'm going to just because I love the, okay, I, I moved this and I didn't mean to. Just because I freaking love that comment and don't listen to anybody any ever again. I'm going to give it an extra point. I love that counter anti-societal, anti-establishment feeling. But let's play with that, okay? So I can pass your class, all right? Pass. Dang straight. I'm the holder of points, right? So you can pass the class. You're not here to self-actualize. You're not here because you have nothing else better to do with your life. You're here for a very specific purpose. You're here to pass the class so you can graduate and move on with your life. Excellent. Okay, uh, Valeria, uh, you're qualified to know what you're talking about because of all the experience I've had, right? Qualified. All right, very good. Excellent, we're gonna come back to that. Um, Sadie, I listen to you because you have something to offer to help make me better, right? Qualified, something to offer to make you better. Yeah. And, and let's, let's be clear. You're awesome as you are, but you can be even more effective in your awesomeness. That's what education is about. Doesn't make you better, makes you more effective in your awesomeness. Okay. And uh, Taylor said true to somebody or another, probably, you know, the, the, the uh, comment about enthusiasm, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this, right? Real quick before we move on. We have enthusiasm. You need the points to pass the class. I'm qualified and I have something to offer. Ergo, you listen to me, right? And, and do as I ask. All right, with that in mind, Let's talk about some of the ways that we use communication to project power. And these are the ones that I want you to take those notes on, on how you influence others and how others influence you. Okay, so two types, two categories of power. Each have three types of power attributed to them, two categories. The first category is formal power. Formal power is well, it's formal. It exists because of an official organization. Without an official organization per se, formal power wouldn't really be there. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, first type of formal power is legitimate or position power, all right? And as it says here is, I'm above somebody in the structure. So if we were to go to Canvas, that would be me right there because Canvas says I'm the teacher. And this would be you guys down here because Canvas says you are the students. Because right now you and I are in a formal organization, this formal organization has positions. And I just so happen to, in this organization, hold that position. Now, we could go to any other organization in which you may very well hold a position that I don't. So I want you to think about that. Um, 
sure, right now I'm the teacher, so you're going to do as I say. Eh, not really. I, I, by the way, I think legitimate or position power is the weakest form of power. I'm going to show you that all the others are infinitely more powerful. I think position or legitimate power is the weakest form because watch this, watch this. I have position power in this class right now for three more months. After three months, I'll have no position power. And I know that, and I know from experience, and this isn't me going, oh, wah, wah, nobody loves me, but I'm gonna share something. Right now, you interact with me, you participate in the chats, you comment on the videos in, in Nutshell Brainery, and I feel like, oh, you're part of the tribe, right? But then after this class is done, you're going to move on with your life. I'm staying in the class. I am forever in the class. And I'm abandoned every semester. Every semester, everybody disappears. And then a new group comes in and they participate and they include in the chat and so forth. And I often think, you know what? I have a lot more to offer than just points and so forth, which we'll talk about in a second. But if the only power I have in your life is position and points, which we'll talk about here in a second, I am very weak, very weak, all right? So let's continue on with this idea. We've got reward power. All right, I have the ability to give you something you want, all right? Josh pointed this out. Dude, I want the freaking points. Give me the points so I can pass the class, graduate, and move on, right? And I am the holder of points. And so you're going to be more inclined to do as I ask because you want those sweet, sweet points. But once again, this is only because of the organization, a formal organization. Once the semester is over and I no longer have a valuable commodity like points to offer you, if I can't offer you anything else, you're gone. That's why formal power is not the strongest. Okay, by the way, what do you have that others want? What do others have that others want? What do you have that others want? I'll tell you one thing right now. I want, uh, where's my button? There's my button. I want your comments. I want your chats. What am I willing to do to get those? I'm willing to give extra credit. I'm willing to call out your names. I'm willing to give some extra little things once in a while. I'm willing to, you know, hearken back to your comments and chat all throughout the lecture to affirm and validate your contribution. You have power over me in this forum. Really you have power. Okay, let's keep going. All right, then we have coercive power. Coercive power is just the opposite of reward power. It's saying, I can take away something you want to keep. So maybe I'm offering something that you like, right? Well, I can take it away if you know, so for example, right now we have uh, we have 11 folks with us. That's most of the class. That is fantastic. I'm a happy man. You are rewarding me with your attendance. That's how you have reward power. You're rewarding me with your attendance and with your chat. But I have had semesters in the past where very few people came and nobody chatted. So I said, all right. I guess we're not going to do these anymore. I, if they're not of value to that to you, why why do them? Well, people didn't like that. It was kind of like, well, then we got to have this give and take, right? So you have coercive power as well, even in this forum. So think about ways in which people kind of have it over you, and you do as they as they say because you don't want them to take something away. And what do you have that you can take away, right? Okay, now, remember, these are the formal types of power. I maintain 
that formal power, which is position or legitimate power, reward power and coercive power are not as strong as what we are about to talk about, right? Um, and again, the reason that I state this is right now, the only power I really have is formal power. Once the semester is over, that formal power disappears, right? So what really has staying power? What kind of power do we really, really want to nurture in our lives? We want to nurture personal power. This is the type of power that will, um, I'm sorry, my nose is going nuts, that will enable you to have influence and autonomy for the whole rest of your life, okay? Not just because you're part of some group, but forever and ever and ever. All right, so let's talk about what these are. First one, expert power, right? Possess a skill or an ability that makes you valuable to others. Now, a couple of you, couple of you pointed out, you said, hey, you know what, Lon? Um, you have, you're qualified and you have something to offer right? Um, that is what we would call expert power. You have, I have something that you want, expertise, insight, experience, training, you name it. And you believe as, uh, as, uh, um, as Sadie said, you believe that you can benefit from this. You can benefit from this expertise, right? Therefore, you are going to continue to allow me to exert some level of power and influence over you. So, how does this have staying power? Maybe, you know, you're going to, after you graduate, after this class, at least, you're still going to want to know how to do a resume. I can help you with resumes. You're still going to want to know how to rock an interview. I can teach you how to rock an interview. You still want to know how to deal with difficult bosses or coworkers. I can help you with that. You still want to know how to start a business. You still want to know how to ask for a raise. You still want to, the next five, six, seven, ten years of your life, I have um, expertise that can help you in that. And so my hope is that you will allow me to continue to help you in your careers as you go forward. If I am successful in communicating to you my expertise and my passion in helping my students, then I will be successful in retaining expert power. <laughs> expert power, right? This is top notch. Now, you know expert power. You've seen it in the workplace, right? Think about this. Do you have, maybe you have a situation at work where to get something done, you have to go through a specific process. You talk to this person, you fill out this form, you get approval from this body, and then you go off and do this. There's a process. Or you just go talk to Jill, because Jill will just get that crap done. Jill has expert power. You want to make sure Jill is happy with you and that you do as Jill asks, because you can avoid all that crap if you're just good with Jill. I'll give you an example. Each semester we have to, you know, I don't want to say fight, but we compete with, our, with the other faculty to get the classes we want, the classes we want, the time slots we want, and so forth. And there's a really good process to go through this. And frankly, I work with some kick-ass faculty, so it's not a problem. However, the person responsible for making, to, for getting all this scheduling done, Christy, Christy Grooms. Some of you may have a class with Christy Grooms. I make it my calling in life to take care of Christy because Christy takes care of me, right? That is expert power. All right, let's continue on. Referent power. Referent power. If you are admired by others, inspiring them to want to follow you, that's referent power. Now, referent power is a lot like the cult of personality. 
people just think you're awesome and they want to follow your Instagram channel and they want to follow your TikTok and they want to hang out with you and they want to wear what you wear. The very fact that we have celebrity endorsements, you know, when a celebrity comes on and says, I wear Nike, right? The very fact that we have celebrity endorsements shows the power of referent power. We are willing to do things just because we really revere the person that is attached to that. Um, now, there's people who might have referent power over you. Maybe your parents do. Sure, parents have position power. I'm the mom, I'm the dad, or mom, mom you know, but maybe they have referent power too. Maybe you're old enough in your life. Actually, you are all old enough in your life. You're old enough in your life to where if you actually want to listen to your parents, it's because you choose to. It's because you respect them. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I, I Trust me, I get whether you do or don't, right? Um, but if, if you continue to seek after them as mentors, maybe people at work are mentors, guides, and so forth, then this is referent power. Now, when you pointed out, like Taylor pointed out, hey, Lon, you're enthusiastic and, you know, you make me enjoy it and so forth. That is ancillary to referent power. That's not saying, well, golly gee, Lon, you're just the cat's meow. No, it's not saying that, but it's saying, hey, you bring something to this that I kind of sort of like, and I want to hang out with it. That's a form of referent power. You have referent power with your friends. Your friends like you, and why shouldn't they, right? Your friends like you. That's referent power. All right, last one. That's, that's number three. Last one is network power. Network power is having people in your network um, uh, people in your network who others want in their own networks, okay? Um, so, for example, I always invite my students to follow me in LinkedIn, okay? And please do. I'm going to put that, we're going to talk more about that in the future, but follow me in LinkedIn because I have a significant network, and I can hook you up with some pretty influential people. I can hook you up with hiring managers. I can hook you up with HR people and so forth. I can connect you with people who can help you in your careers. Um, or you maybe you want to keep contact with me after this class because maybe one day you want a referral, a recommendation, either to a, a program at a university, a scholarship, or a recommendation for work right? Something of that nature. Um, there are any number of reasons why we may want to network. Now, let me tell you why I want to network with you. And I'm not just making this up. I want you to just accept what I'm about to say here for a moment. Um, 10 to 15 years from now, you are going to be the movers and shakers in the economy. I know that's kind of hard to wrap your minds around right now because you have this little whatever pay the bills job that doesn't really light your fire, but you got to do it and, and so on and so forth. But 10 to 15 years from now, you are going to be the managers. You are going to be the, the business owners. You are the ones who are going to be hiring. You are the ones who are going to be making decisions at the state level and so forth. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about, okay? It's just the way that a career life cycle goes. 10 to 15 years from now, you're going to be peaking. I'd sure love to have a whole network of people who are the movers and shakers at my disposal 10 to 15 years from now. Maybe I want to have that when I'm starting my next business. Maybe I want to have that for my students. Maybe I want to have that um, for when I retire and I want to be able to set myself up and so forth. Um, don't practice relationship arrogance. Don't look around at each other and say, why would I want to network with you? You're just a nobody. Nobody's a nobody forever. You guys are going to be somebody's one day. So 
I want to have networks with you, therefore you have network power over me because sure, right now you're my student, but 10 years from now, you're gonna be running a company out at Point of the Mountain and I'd sure like to know you then. I'm gonna be coming up to you, remember me, I was your teacher. And you're gonna to say to me, dude, listen, I had 400 teachers. I don't remember all of them. And I'm gonna, okay. All right, that's just the way it is. I don't remember my teachers. Holy hell, why would I? Okay, all right, now let's get in there. You took notes. Share with me a little bit about where you have power and where others have power over you. And as we do this, we're going to get these participation, you know, marks going sky high, right? Because I really hope that you internalized my message that you, in fact, have a lot of power in your, in your current life. So tell me, where do you have power? Who do you influence and how, right? Do you have younger brothers and sisters that look up to you? That's position power because older brother, sister, that's referent power because they want to be like you, right? Um, do you have, you know, friends that organize their schedule around your, your class schedule so that you can hang out, go gaming, you know, things like that? Um, that's power and influence because they want to hang out with you, right? So, hey, Josh. All right, I'm going to get this out of the way so we can go nuts here with this. Um, so we're going to get some great real world examples in this, right? Um, coach, you know, football. Exactly. Okay, so Josh, you have position power, you have reward power, you have coercive power, and you probably have some degree of referent power because everybody, not everybody, but people look up to their coach, right? So you have a tremendous amount of power in that organization. Very good. Uh, Taylor, at my job, I have, it's expert power. I know how to do pretty much everything and, and when it comes to running things in the building. Yes, and if people are always coming to you and saying, Oh, Taylor, how do I this? How do I do this? How can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? That's that's expert power. Very good. Sadie, I influence my brothers and sisters, friends, co-workers. Co yes, you have all kinds, right? And, you know, don't worry, we'll do the celebration here in a moment. Let's just keep going. Um, let's see, Taylor, uh, no one understands the printer. <laughs> You make me think of the scene from, uh, is that Office Space? Yeah, the printer. No one understands the printer, right? Um, Valeria, a uh, trainer, and I influence my client. Okay. Valeria, trainer, influencing clients to live healthier lives. You have expert power. You have referent power. You have reward power. You have coercive power. You have position power right? Great, great example. Um, can my wife, <laughs> ain't that the truth, okay? That's going to get double real-world examples, right? Wife influences me to do the dishes. Seriously, it's my job, my job security dealing with that darn printer. I absolutely love it. Okay, um, and I'm sure we got a couple more contributors in there. Um, in reference to a section, Sadie, glad to hear you do the di dishes, Josh. Um, you know, guys, and I'm talking to the guys for a moment, right? If any of you want to get together one time, I will share with you the secret to a perfect marriage. I know the secret to a perfect marriage. It's all here. I know it all. And part of it is, yes, honestly, do the dishes. Okay, all right. Hey, gosh, right? You guys killed it, all right? Fantastic. Um, we're, I have no doubt we're gonna get these up. As a matter of fact, I'm just, uh, you know, who knows what a, where we are in contributors. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Yay, power, Valeria, okay. 
you are getting two real-world examples for calling that out. We have now just exercised power over each other. You influenced me, I influenced you, which is perfect workplace communication because it should go back and forth, right? So very good. You know the drill, everyone. What's the time? 9.10, 9.10. Yeah, you're about to get triples. You're about to get triples. So we're gonna go, uh, 9, 10, that's what you're going to send me, right? Remember the whole deal, you, eat, you send that to me and you're gonna be in great shape, all right? And I'd love to get us to triples. Okay, now let's continue on. You guys, very, very good. I appreciate you um, taking, um, taking part, there's the word, taking part in this exercise, right? I really want you to, to embrace the idea that you have some power. Okay, now I wanna take a moment and talk about communication and situational leadership. The thing about communication and in leading others is you need to know what kind of communication to bring to bear at the right, at the right time. So, I'm, I'm very fond of saying, we used to say this at Intel a lot, communication is about communicating the right message to the right people at the right time through the right channel. Meaning it is all dependent on the situation. Whatever is right, right message at the right time to the right people through the right channel is dependent on the situation. So let me talk a little bit about that, show you what I mean. There are times when employees don't have the information they need, right? So for example, um, you need to do assignments and every once in a while, well, you, to do the assignment, I need information. What do you want me to do, right? And so as a leader in this classroom, it is my job to educate and communicate. I want to provide the information you need to perform your job, in this case being the assignment. So I make sure that the assignments have the right level of detail and I answer questions through email, so on and so forth. In this instance, I am providing leadership through education and communication because you need more information, okay? All right, but now sometimes employees feel excluded. They don't really feel part of the team, right? Well, in this case, it's my job as a leader to encourage participation and involvement. So for instance, um, you guys are all on teams. Some of your teams are coming together nicely. Some of your teams are still struggling to get started. By the way, if you are struggling to get started, don't get down on yourself and don't get down on each other. We're simply in the forming stage. This is normal, okay? Nevertheless, as a leader in this particular organization, it's my job to encourage participation and involvement. So how do I do that? Well, I do it through one-on-one -on -one emails, one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom conversations. You recently saw an announcement where I said, hey, I want one member of each team to come to the um, Zoom meeting that we're having a week, from, a, a week from today. A week from today, we're having a Zoom meeting about uh, the team charters and I want at least one team member from every team there. Furthermore, I have told people that if you did not get the team forming points in our last assignment because you you know, were unable to attend the meeting or you're new or you just couldn't bring yourself to attend and so forth, if you attend that meeting, I'll get you the points and we'll help you form as a team. This is all me trying to encourage participation and involvement, okay? Now, another situation is when anxiety is high, all right? Oftentimes in the workplace, anxiety is high. What's happening? Think about COVID. 
I mean, this, this past year, anxiety has been through the roof because we don't know what's the business like, what's going to happen, am I going to be furloughed, am I going to be laid off, am I going to, you know, do I have a job, what's happening? It's been a mess. It's been a mess. In those instances, it's, it's the job of the leaders to, facilit uh, to provide facilitation and support, right? Recognizes the human side of what's going on and provides support. So, for example, I will quite often have a student, we're about a month into a four-month semester, right? We're a month, a little bit more than a month into a four-month semester. It's at this point that I might have a student every once in a while contacting me and says, hey, hold on, Lon, I'm running an F. What am I going to do? Should I drop the class? I've got an F. I think I need to drop the class. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Don't drop. Don't drop. There is always a solution. Don't worry about it. Let me explain how this is going to work. We're going to be fine. I know you're anxious. I know you're concerned. You've spent money on this and you don't want to have to retake it. I don't want you to have to retake it either. We're going to take care of you. So that's an example of me attempting to provide support to a student who is particularly anxious right now because they're running an F or a D in the class. By the way, if you're running an F or a D in the class, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. We're okay. If you want to talk, contact me. We'll take care of you. You can be running an F in the class right now and still end with an A. Totally. Totally. All right. So let's talk. All right. There's also times, though, when those who are in a position of power or those who are pushing against you are themselves in a position of power. All right. So you can't just make everybody do what you want them to do. Some of those people are pretty powerful, right? So in that case, you need to talk about negotiation. So for example, you have power with me. We've already talked about that. You have a fair amount of power over me in this organization. But I have a lot. I have a lot, right? So if you want something from me, you can't just say, Lon, this situation, this is what I want you to do. I expect you to respond by this time with a yes, and we're fine. By the way, I have people who do this. That won't work because I am in a position of power and influence. You can't just tell me what to do. I'm in a position of power and influence. Does that mean you're screwed? Heavens no negotiation, right? You can come to me and negotiate. You can offer this. I can offer that. We can come to a happy medium. We're going to be fine, right? Um, but I'm going to have to give up a little bit. You're going to have to give up a little bit. But so long as there's a win-win, that is what we want to come away with. That is the power of communication negotiating an agreement with those who are in power? Yeah. Okay. The last one is when the organization is at risk and employees have few avenues to effectively resist. Explicit and implicit coercion. Yes. All right. Sometimes threaten employees with undesirable consequences if they continue to resist. Um. You know, take a look at this picture. Take a look at that picture. These firefighters are using the jaws of life. Actually, it's not a jaw of life. It's just a big crowbar. But anyway, to rip open that car to save a life. I know it's just a training exercise, but you see what I'm saying. Now, when they come up to you on the freeway and get out the jaws of life and there's fire and everything going up, they don't first knock on the window and say, uh, excuse me, sir or madam. Um, so by the looks of things, we feel like you're in kind of a, a tough jam. There's a fire going on over here. There's more cars barreling down. Um, 
we would like your permission to use the jaws of life to open up the door. Understand your car is already pretty beat up, but the jaws of life are going to kill it even more. We're pretty much going to destroy the car. So now far be it from us to just presume um, it's your car. It's your life. We don't want to. They're not going to do that. They're going to come up and they are going to force their solution. And you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. All right. Well, how do we do this? Well, at school. Now, right now we're in broadcast, which means we don't have to wear masks. We don't like to wear masks. I, um, well, I shouldn't say I'm fine with it. I agree to do it. But obviously, I would prefer not. But the school has said, if you're going to teach lectures, I teach lectures on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you're going to teach in-person lecture, you're going to wear a mask. And I go, yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full, because I don't have a choice, right? Um, so that is an example of when the organization is at risk. We're just going to do what needs to be done. OK, so those are examples of position power of, of, of different leadership styles in different situations. I'll tell you what, give me a real world example. I gave one masks. I gave lots of others in terms of classes and so forth. Give me a real world example of one of the types of power that you just saw and um, we're going to go ahead and triple this out. All right. Triple, triple the points. So I'm going to go to the questions for a second and uh, give me an example. Examples. Fantastic people. Check these out. Mom telling me to throw away the trash. That's kind of explicit power, right? You don't want to, but you got to do it. I agree to drive the speed limit, even though I don't want to. I think you're lying, Josh. I don't think you drive the speed limit. I know I don't. All right. Obey the laws. Yeah. Yeah. Do homework when I don't want to. Yes. OK. Excellent example, people. Excellent. And yeah, bam. Check that bad boy out. Three tens. Good. Good. Congratulations, everyone. So thank you very much. Very well done. You guys rocked it today. You seriously did. Uh, when we there's no there's no lecture on Monday. And when we come back on Wednesday, we're going to do ourselves a Zoom meeting. So I'm looking forward to seeing your faces again and talking with you. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that you are totally set up right with your teams. All right. So as always, I'll stick around for a little while if you have any questions or comments. But uh, have a fantastic rest of the week. And if you get a three day weekend, I don't know because of your jobs, but if you get a three day weekend, enjoy that. All right. We'll see you later.